All I can say after leaving this latest Bleach Thousand Year Blood War episode is that was some cheating, and I am here for it. I am a sucker for a character that's just cool, that does something that feels different than the others in a show. And I gotta admit, BG9 is kind of a badass. I mean, it's one thing to maybe bring a gun to a sword fight. It's a whole other league to bring a minigun to a sword fight because... This poor dude just trying to look after his little sister, he's already Dr. Octopus stabbing fools with some giant piercing tentacles of death, and then he pulls out the Gatlin gun, and honestly man, if that wasn't cool enough, the fact that once that's gone and he can't use that, he just becomes a human missile dispenser, and I was like, what in Iron Man Ultron bullshit is this, but I am here for the carnage that you're selling, and if you can get me rooting for a bad guy in the middle of something where I know I should not be rooting for them, you know Bleach is doing something right. Full live reaction episode 15 of the Thousand Year Blood War is available on my Patreon if you would like to see my full uncut thoughts as I watch today's very exciting episode. I mean, Bleach, it came back with a bang. Last week, a very strong episode, but there's something about this one that just cranks it up a few notches. And honestly, I think episodes like these make me very happy that they didn't decide to release all 52 episodes of this Bleach anime in one go because we know damn well had episode 15 come out just a couple of weeks after episode 13, it wouldn't have looked nearly as good as it did. Because this was a very polished episode, 100%. I think one of my favorite things is the use of colors. I mean, the blues and reds and how they overtake the screen, depending on are the good guys seemingly doing okay, or are the villains kind of, well, pushing our shit in. And honestly, it had some really solid directing. Even the little moments that I appreciate with the subtitling, you don't see it a lot. I mean, if we rewind years back when fan subs were big and kind of in charge, fan subbers would do some crazy shit with fan subs. And honestly, half the time it was too overblown. They were like putting subs all over the screen. And it was a little disorienting. But there is a, a style that can really pop something out. And the first moment of this episode, when they're at the table and they pull back and you see Bleach, episode 15, title drop, as we are just looking at all the characters, those are the moments that are really cool in my opinion, and honestly, I think it's really interesting how they made things look really, really solid for these characters. I mean, whether we're going fire versus ice, or we're dealing with humanoid bots, and I'm like, bro, are you even human anymore, BG9? Like, why the hell are you, why the hell are you Iron Man over here, but I love what you're selling. It was nice to see how they bait you in making things seem hopeful, like, okay, we end last week, the world's over in nine days. That's a pretty heavy thing, but all things considered, they're doing okay. Hell, even characters who can't use their abilities like they used to. Like, everything was going okay, and then in a blink of an eye, it all went to chaos. Honestly, I like how they were kind of countering fire, especially using ice, because the whole idea of, like, vacuum layering in a way, in order to make the ice not melt, was actually pretty clever, all things considered but you knew it wasn't going to continue going as well as it was looking. There was just no way in hell, right? Especially because this dude, even though he was arrogant and overconfident, you kind of felt like there was a reason for that. And the idea of fighting with a single finger at one point and launching Hyper Beam and piercing him, I mean, I was like, ah, oh, if, if anyone's going to die, it's going to be the girl here. And I was like, bro, you, you just pierced him pretty close to the heart. What the hell's going on? Or then when he uses two fingers and he basically is Wolverine Claw with Fire Blast, I mean... There are some pretty cool moves in this episode, but I think one of the more ice-cold moments isn't even, a, like, a physical attack, it's just verbal abuse. Like, so we put up this, like, barrier, right? And honestly, powerful, looks nice. I'm thinking, hey, can you just make a cube and trap some fools in there? That'd probably solve a lot of issues. The idea of just throwing it in your face, like, hey, instead of mastering it yourself, maybe you should have worked on teaching it to other people so people would, you know, actually be able to have a, a chance at fighting, not being brutally massacred by my boys. And I'm like, bruh, the, the slander is insane. I mean, we know eventually Ichigo's gonna pop up, he's gonna turn the tide, and we're gonna have some crazy fights with him, of course. Right now, he's kind of stuck in Super Mario 64, where he's trying to go up to Bowser before he has enough stars. That doorway just keeps going farther and farther as he, as he explains, he feels like he's just... He's so heavy, there's like this ton of rocks almost weight-wise kind of holding him down. It's cool to see that, but eventually he's going to come and probably that will start turning the tides a bit. But as it stands, things aren't looking good. And I think things shouldn't look good if your big bad of the arc is saying, we ending the world in nine days, and they really are living up to that expectation. I mean, at first, 
I laughed. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. I didn't realize they were saved, of course, but when there was that group of people and they just explode in the fiery blast and then dude's like, hey, what's going on here? I was like, that, that's some ice cold stuff. There was the moment with the little sister, though, that I, I truly got baited. So basically, this, this big bro is just trying to protect his little sis. And at one point, they bait you in. Actually, it's two times. Like, one point, like, there's, like, one of the arms kind of, like, goes in front of her face. Like, another point, she has blood all over her eyes because the big bro obviously takes the blow for her. It was pretty crazy, all things considered. But I like the variety of combat. I like the variety of attacks. And honestly, man, it was pretty clever, like, vacuum layering your ice in order to be burn-proof in a lot of ways. And just in general, this felt very refined, very exciting. The OST was pure fire, man. Like, there was... A few minutes, like, it was kind of funny because they start playing this really nice riff, and then we switch over to the brother and sister, and he's having a conversation, like, why he can't just run away with her, and we saw this badass music in the background, I'm like, alright, alright, here we go, here we go, and then just everything goes to hell, and I was like, okay, of course it is, because we're still early in this arc, there's no way we're actually gonna get constant W's after W's, there's gonna be a lot of death, there's gonna be a lot of fatalities, but at the end of the day it's always darkest before the dawn, right? And we're reaching peak dark sooner and sooner than I was expecting. But overall, I like the fact that rather than just making these, the villains of an arc just be like, yeah, they're kind of cool or they're kind of psycho. No, it feels like if you had to pick a side right now of who you think is going to survive, most people are going to be going over to the Quincy's because goddamn, like they are tanks right now. But of course, because of how helpless it feels, it gets the viewers excited to see our heroes come in and turn the tides and obviously get a W. I mean, our boy's still working for the dark side, whether he's got a plan up his sleeve or he's actually fully switched. Either way, a fight between him and Ichigo seems all but given. Either way, this was a great episode, even better than last week's return in my opinion, and it seems like we're just going to get crazier and crazier before it ever cools down. I mean, Bleach just makes me happy. I love the production style, I love the art design, I love the music and the voice actors, and I love seeing characters pull out a minigun to then shooting a bunch of missiles at characters when you think you're about to have some sword clashes, but no, like, this is pretty sick. It was pretty cool when the girl, like, grabbed the one that was trying to attack her and then she spun it around. And it immediately makes you think, like, okay, the, the tables have turned only for him to come in and launch a giant laser, like, face first. And I'm like, okay, they, like, this is just cheating at this point. But it's hard not to get excited by said cheating. But let me know what you thought, whether if you're a manga reader or anime original like myself, what do you think of episode 15 of the Thousand Year Blood War? And how hyped are you for next week? Do let me know. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more videos to the channel. And like I mentioned, we do have full live reaction to today's wonderful episode available. And hey, while you're there, you can also get a video shoutout. It's like Rolia, Maya, Ferno19Z, and Gabby G are getting today. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.